or just white people in general, is what you're saying. Yes. <laughs> that's, yes. That's, that's, I am no, racist. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. White people in general. I can't be racist. I'm not in a power. I'm not in a power thing. How can I have power? <laughs> that's classic. Welcome, oh my God. Welcome the power of Russ, Jesse. Thank God wow. I'm Puerto Rican. <laughs> that is a uh, calamity, folks. Welcome aboard. If, uh, you, if this is your first time, yeah, that's pretty much how it always goes. Uh, <laughs> if, if you're joining back with us, thanks for coming back. Follow us on Twitch. Follow us on Twitter. Take a look at our YouTube archive mm-hmm. if you want to shoot shit about D&D. Uh, join our Discord if you want cool things like a uh, phone case, a uh, shower curtain, a duvet, a skateboard, cool shirt. Uh-huh. Uh, uh-huh. Well, go, my go camera's too high. Go to our shop, uh, take a look there. Uh, most importantly, if you want to join us on Tuesday uh, on our talk show or next Saturday on the One Shot um, Hobo Inc. Twitter, Gmail, hit us up. Shout out to our fine sponsors, Pirate Dog Dice, uh, that make oh. dice that may or may not kill the party tonight, uh, depending on what they do. Well, you can hit them up at Twitter, at Pirate Dog Dice. Uh, also, if your game stinks, unlike ours, ours smells like success and heroism. Uh, heroism. Uh, try some adventure scents by oddfishgames.com. <clears throat> Come in a variety heroism. of different scents. Uh, they also make the shine system. So if you want to write much more gooder than me, check that out. Also, coming soon, real soon, the Kickstarter for how to RPG with your cat. Finally, if you're going to Gen Con and uh, you've got a little bit of downtime, Check out their booth. Uh, they need some booth assistance, uh, and they'll uh, pay in uh, cool cash or uh, cool swag. Uh, your choice. Hit them up at oddfishgames.com. Folks, uh, like I said, this is the Calamity uh, campaign. Uh, we'll go ahead and recap it here in just a minute. First, let's introduce you to the people who are powerless to Jesse. Uh, Rob, <laughs> you're up first. Who are you? Who are you playing? Well, I'm Rob, and you can find me at Cthulhu Rob on Twitter and some other things if you look hard. Um, and you can find me on Murder Hobo on every other Saturday night playing Dave of Ba and occasionally on a one shot. That's about it. That's it. Scott, you're <laughs> up next. Yeah. Scott. So, yeah, I'm uh, which one? Am I? I'm the step. Yeah. So I'm, I'm Scott. Also go by uh, um, um, DM Poopa on Twitter. Uh, I'm up to 12 followers now. 12. Maybe, maybe even more. I may be, it may be 22. I may be off 10 because I'm not really good with uh, with the with the counting of things. But um, um, I'm I'm definitely <laughs> trending. Definitely trending. You are trending. If you need your taxes done, check Damn. out the um, booba. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Next up is Jesse. Jesse, same question, different answers. Uh, hello, I, I am Jesse. You can find me on the uh, different social media pages at JR Wooey. Uh, and you will find me here on Saturdays as Azari the Lean and Ranger or the Happy Go Lucky uh, Dwarf from Down Under Coda uh, when the B team pops in. I do like the Aussie, the little Aussie rugger. Oh, man, right. you can't. Uh, he's wow. ready to play. Last but certainly not least, David. Who are you? Who are you playing? Hi, I'm David. You can follow me on the Twitterverse. Uh, I am D and Devious at Twitter. Uh, yeah, I play Ingve in this campaign. Uh, Ingve is the Circle of the Shepherd Druid. Uh, I'm also when I'm playing with the boys from Toad Town. I am. Okay. <laughs> I am Crow, the, the almost undead rogue. And uh, also, uh, yeah, you can catch me on the Cacophony Show and One Shots and mostly on BTR. So you can, yeah, find me about here anytime. So uh, Crow is the savior 
of Toad Town. <laughs> yeah, he is. <laughs> uh, <laughs> With that, that's what right. It, it could have been 99%. 99%. Yeah. I got 100. Everybody's dead. Uh, yeah. Folks, this is the Calamity Campaign. This is our stone slash bronze age. However, uh, if you tuned in last time, you realize that uh, we're talking post-apocalyptic at this point in time. These guys found a taxi cab section, a big library where Azari's uh, beloved sister, the last one they were searching for, had been possessed by a ghost slash poltergeist. Uh, they have rescued her. However, she is still under the weather and unable to walk on her own. These guys are in the middle of an island caught between two rivers of uh, dubious power. So they have decided to check out the buildings around the area, and they have found a subterranean passage uh, made of chiseled stone and metal grating. Uh, these guys have decided that the metal grating tunnel goes down far enough that they might be able to cross underneath the river. Uh, and this was confirmed by DM Puba, uh, or his uh, summation believes that they can cross over this. He had a little bit of a run in with uh, kind of a captured prisoner kind of person uh, who has allegedly escaped, according to uh, Rakir. Can't find him anywhere. Uh -uh. No clue. He's very fast with a shattered leg, <laughs> courtesy <laughs> of Dave and Ingve and Zari. Although Dave really where he was him. moving like he was just <clears throat> possessed. Yeah, another yeah. possession. Uh, so these guys decided to go underneath last time. Uh, they have a rather small but potent following of rescued individuals. All the bad guys uh, are done with, uh, except for the one that escaped. Uh, <clears throat> you guys have decided to go underground. Uh, I think we're still in the middle of the day. So you guys wanted to do, or no, this is the early morning mm -hmm. uh, because uh, Dave found the alarm <laughs> slash dragon noise. Uh, so. You guys are headed down again. Uh, it's more or less an interior tower going down. I killed it. Uh, once you guys reach the bottom, there is standing water, stagnant, if you will, and a door that leads into a long passage. Uh, I will assume you guys are taking the lead, or did you want to divide two and two with everybody else in the middle? I think we should I divide. I think we should send some of the villagers out in front <laughs> i mean cuban shields no 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 yes not yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> no it's just that and they are that non threatening here. i mean if they see armed people whoever enemies come if they see armed people that may send out the wrong message they may think that we're trying to attack them. If you send people that look hurt and, and innocent and, and, and in need of aid, that would send the correct message. Uh, don't have to live like a So we will have two of us maintaining the front and two of us maintaining the rear. Sorry, go tell Dave what to do. Who wants up uh, front? Who wants in the back? Okay. I guess Ingve will be up front with the uh, I'll be up front too. Probably got, you guys won't trust me in the back. So. Oh my God. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, well, we're the ones that are least intimidating. Yeah, that, that, that also holds to my theory. You we're never not, saw. I, yeah, you never saw Scott's private messages. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, neither did the people we're about to encounter. Yeah. Uh, Ingve, Rakir, uh, you lead them down, get to the bottom, open mm -hmm. up the door. Rock here, you are quite familiar with this. You've been here before. It, it's about a 30-foot wide tunnel, Ingve. Uh, there is metal grating for a floor. Below the metal grating uh, is a, a giant open area. Uh, about 25, 30 feet ahead is a, a what appears to be a barrel made out of metal. <clears throat> barrel made out of metal, huh? Mm -hmm. And it's sitting right in the middle of this metal grating. 
Uh, again, it's dark, so you guys are going to have to use illumination. Dark vision is mm -hmm. not going to help you out very well. Uh, uh, but you it, can is tell, the barrel upright or is it on its side? Uh, it is on its side, actually. Mm. Okay. Mm. Uh, made of metal. Okay. Made of metal. Made of metal. Okay. Mm. Wow. A lot well, of metal here. A lot of so metal. Heavy metal. Um, yeah, I'll I'll ignite some torches. <laughs> Frank's like, yeah, go ahead, do that. Sure, that works. Light springs forth. Uh, Azari, Dave, uh, you kind of heard everybody else in. Azari, remember your sister's uh, requires assistance. I assume you're going to have some of the other uh, rescued individuals carry yeah. her in. Uh, so you guys can see two torches spring to action. And again, the ceiling of this place is curved, not made of wood. It's made of stone. Some high quality artisans have tunneled out the bedrock here and, and made oh, a nice oh. curved ceiling. The metal grating looks down into darkness, uh, but from where Rakir and Ingve are, there's this metal barrel. Uh, and it looks like the contents have spilled over one side of this metal grating. On the other side of this is a box-like item uh, that can best be described as a podium, if you will, that looks off the left side. As you guys use your lights, you notice large metal doors on the left side and the tunnel has been chiseled out on the right to form kind of a path into another tunnel down below. So do you want to investigate the left or the right? How many people are we all together? Yeah, uh, 26. Okay, wow. so there's like 24 people between, or 22 people between the four of us. Okay. But it's a 30 foot wide really? gap, so people are starting to mill about. That's, that's uh, right. they're, they're looking Just at Rakir and Ingve and trying not to get behind. I say How many of them actually look like they would be able to stand to, to stand in a fight for or of any, I mean, like the injury level, 10%, <laughs> five of them, two of them? Peck, peck. Uh, maybe uh, D12 against me. What does your textbook say? Fucking tech tech worthless. <laughs> nine. I didn't know if that was a six or a nine, but that's a nine. I'll give you a peck peck and one other female. Okay. Uh, it will be a female from your tribe, uh, one of the miners. You will know her as Cyril. Cyril. Okay. Cyril. All right, so Cyril and Peck Peck, I would ask for them to kind of come up, you know, maybe a little bit behind us, you know, to kind of also help in the leading bit. And then, I don't know, guys, left or right? Everybody perception check. Uh, Sure. Uh, 21. 21. Oh. Hey, brother. 19. <laughs> that would be a nat, uh, not a nat, just a dirty 20. All of you here, drip, drip, drip. Hmm. And it will be ahead of Ingve and Rakir to the left. Okay. Um, now the drip, does it sound like it's dripping on solid or other water? Like falling. Oh. Solid? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, ooh. Um, uh, real quick, Dave and Azari, do you guys also light torches as well? Uh, yeah. Because dark vision will not... <laughs> we'll get ruined by other torches. So um, I'd also like to pass uh, four torches into the crowd sure. between so that we have a good amount of light around. 
Sure. A lot of illumination. Okay, Rakir and Ingve, it's on you. Okay, I tell Rakir left, maybe. Yeah, left. Yeah. Uh, you guys move towards the dripping water. Uh, on the left wall, in the illumination of your torches, you see a large metal door, for lack of a better term. About 20 feet, another large metal door. The podium, and directly out left of the podium is another door. And give me both perception checks. 11. A dirty three. Neither one of you can tell where that dripping's coming from, but you know you're close to it. Uh, the podium has levers and buttons on it. Oh. <clears throat> okay. Um, yeah, I mean, we're not going to recognize anything. I mean, so. <laughs> but, uh, okay. So we check it out. Is there, is there a smell? Besides musty, us? musty smell. By you, uh, a musty smell and an oily smell. Okay. I'm not really going to know what oil, like petrol oil smells like, but. Uh, it smells like the, uh, uh, what'd you guys go through? The mucklins. Uh -huh. okay. The tar. Uh, yeah, yeah, the tar. tar. It kind of smells like that and we were fine. Okay. And that's what I think it is. <clears throat> so, so yeah, I, I, I tell Tell her here, it smells like there's more tar like substance up ahead. Yeah, I, I'm gonna be like, I, I start behind like, you. I'm behind gonna start you. like, sorry, like, like, like jiggling one of the you know levers a little bit, trying to understand what this material is made of. Um, sure. you know, it, it, it's that's that's strange. Um, that's a six. Uh, it's it's kind of a dark, anonized metal. Uh, uh -huh. Uh, as you do so, uh, it creaks a little bit and it has a little play. Huh. So it, it does it look like it's rusted in place, like the metal is rusted? None of the metal here is rusted for some reason. Oh, and wow. the dripping noise has increased. It's increased. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to leave the levers alone because uh, that's, 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 I just wanted to jiggle them a little bit to see if they were rusted yeah. or stuck. No, nope, um, they, they are not stuck. Okay. That's something to play with later. I, I say we just keep pressing forward. It is Are there yeah. options to open up different doors, or we just keep going through door to door? Uh, you notice when you're jiggling those levers, there is one, two, three, four, five levers. You appear to be in the center of the passage, and you have seen one, Two, three doors. <clears throat> Five levers and three doors. So far. Oh. Okay. Your, your torchlight does not go far enough down to see if there are another two doors. Right. Hmm. All right. I'm going to move a little bit further up with my torchlight to see to see if we can, I mean, I'm not, I'm not immediately drawing this, this, this link between doors and levers. I'm just moving forward sure. because I don't know what else to do. Yeah, no same here. David Azari, go ahead and give me perception rolls. Uh, 24. 25. Uh, as you guys begin to move forward, uh, kind of hurting the group, there's a lot of illumination out there, which is kind of nice, but you guys happen to look down and there are greenish metal circles about 10 feet across. Uh, and they kind of look like those coins that Rakir has. And you notice, because each, both of you scored high, that one of these green things is in front of door one. And the other one is in front of door two. Uh, you cannot see further ahead because of the crowd. So these these ten foot green things appear to line up with the doors. 
Okay. I am completely boggled <laughs> as far as, well, I'm not seeing what they see. So correct. Ingve okay. and rock here. As you move forward, you see door number four. So another door. Are these like Levers. laid out left to right? The doors, you are on a, a catwalk, essentially. The okay. doors are a good 15 feet away. Wait, on and the, the green wall. things are underneath? On the wall. Okay. The catwalk? Mm -hmm. So, like, if I were to say, take out my pouch and take out a river stone mm -hmm. and toss it uh, at the uh, green thing, mm -hmm. What kind of noise does it make when the stone hit the green thing? It makes a ringing noise. Everybody roll perception check. Dave just likes the sound. 10. Uh, 20. Dirty 20. Yeah, then dirty. Dirty. Listen, 8. Uh, Azari and Ingve, uh, you hear... And Azari will see rats scurry away from where the resonating sound from Dave's rock is. Ingve, you'll just hear rats or mice or other vermin. Okay. Um, on those circular things, is there any holes in them or anything that seems like any like water drainage or anything that would go through it? Or is it just a flat... Uh... Inve investigation hole. Okay. Day, uh, eight. Uh, you can't really tell because uh, you know the grating's kind of obscuring, and you're trying to get a good angle on it, but you can't. Okay. So, if it rings, it's like the bronze bell that Gizba has. Yeah, I, I can see that. It's hollow. <clears throat> So hollow metal with a door into it. Maybe it is a secondary entrance. It could, by opening it, it may lead through the door if the door does not open. Ingve and Rakir, you find door number five. And you are coming close to the far end of the walkway. Okay. Uh, do we see anything past the walkway or do we see just like a dead end door just the word of the door behind you got it guys i just want to warn you i only have 19 river stones left in my pouch oh no <laughs> you can always climb down and get uh, your 20th one <laughs> maybe later hey rats are good eating mm -hmm. oh, not scared right. of rats. I, i'm going to turn to ingve and say look there are five doors and five levers um you want to pull one lever and see if it opens the door? Yeah. Yeah, let's do uh, that. You, you guys notice that uh, Rakir's voice is commanding and echoes in this room. Let's pull a lever. Oh. Pull this lever. Uh, Peck Peck and Cyril are currently at the podium. Did you want us to pull a lever? This uh, lever. Yeah, um, at, I'm going to say, hey, Peck Peck, why don't you pull that the the lever? And I'm trying to think about, you know, the lever furthest to your right, and and, and see. You? Yes. Okay. Uh, Maybe get a man to do it. <laughs> he pulls it. Uh, you guys hear a resounding click, and everybody hears a giant screech. Uh, Sorry, see how the I door, tech tech. The last door at Rakir and Ingve yes. actually rises up, and a torrent of water oh, cascades God. in. It is not on the catwalk. Uh, it goes down into the basin below the catwalk. Uh, Rakir and Ingve, perception check. No. That's 10. It's a 19 that time. 
Ingve, oh. uh, you are amazed at the torrent of water coming down. Rakir, you're like, and down below, underneath the gangplank, you see a greenish copperous thing that looks like a giant coin that is in your coin purse. Uh, the water's just hitting it, and now you hear another screech. <laughs> And the water is going down into this area, hitting whatever is underneath this green thing, and then it goes down into the tunnel off to the right. Lights begin to flicker in this tunnel from the ceiling. Pull more levers! It's a big ass, like it's, uh, it's like Hoover Dam. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It is a hydroelectric plant. Yeah. Oh, man. Okay. Oh, more levers. Uh, that's what it seems like. It's a big sluice plant there. The uh -huh. water comes through. Yeah. Shoot. yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, yep. Peck, peck, pull all peck, the levers. Peck, peck starts yanking levers. Uh, Cyril starts yanking levers. The illumination gets very bright, and you can clearly make out strange sigils along the sides of the walls that you have no idea Damn what it is <laughs> uh but it is very bright it's almost like you're outside water is rushing in from all five doors hitting these copper things and going out the sluice gate uh something else though is happening so everybody roll perception uh, 24 <laughs> 23 14 <laughs> okay some of us are expert in perception. Dave. Some of us see the blinky lights. Uh -huh. And Azari. Uh, Dave and Azari, uh, something's going on with these copper things, and it's almost like a humanoid-esque figure is risen to the top of this green thing, but it's got, like, jagged edges. It reminds you of lightning. Uh, and these two creatures leap up uh, and flip themselves onto the gangplank right into the middle of your survivors who scream loudly. Uh, Azari and Dave, since you got the perception, I'll take initiative from you guys. Then I'll get uh, Rakir and Ingve, but they are yeah. out of the fight right now. Oh, yeah. First natural 20 of the night gives me 22 initiative. Nice. Right. Uh, 20. Nice. Uh, Rakir and Ingve initiative rolls, but you are out this round. All right. Um, 13 for Ingve. Dirty 20 for me. Very nice. Uh, Dave, Azari, horror fills your face along with all of the refugees as these lightning creatures jump up uh you both beat me on initiative uh one is close to each one of you so and the crowd is just how far is close melee, uh melee range oh yeah okay. that, at, at first the crowd was amazed at the bright illumination the strange noises it was kind of a cool thing uh maybe <clears> off in the distance you hear a record player playing not sure. Haven't really thought that one through. Uh, but whatever these two damn creatures are, there's one for each of you. <coughs> so, Dave, go ahead. We'll start with you. Squish! Uh, that's a 20. Oh, that hits. Oh, man, I wasn't prepared for it hitting. Oh, holy shit. I should have read this one a little bit better. Plus four. Uh, that's uh, 11 plus four is 15 damage. Nice. Slashing done. right. Uh, that is nice. As you strike the creature, uh, you feel a jolt of electricity come right through. Hit it. And you take 11 hit points of damage. <laughs> now I'm mad. Azari, you're up. Okay, uh, I will bonus action cast Hunter's Mark on the creature. 
Uh, and then I will um, uh, backpedal about 15 feet so it can take an attack of opportunity on me if it wants, I guess. Um, Your, yours is going to do something different. Okay. Uh, then I am going to uh, pull out the bow and fire an arrow at it. Uh, that is a 14 to hit. Nice. Uh, that does hit. Yeah. Cool. 14 uh, is going to be your magic number for these things. Nice. Uh, so I do three, uh, seven points of piercing damage. Um, and then I will take my additional attack. Uh, to run to the door, shut it, and yeah. let all you fly. <laughs> Good luck, <laughs> everyone. <laughs> oh, sorry about, sick. Sorry about <laughs> my sister. Sorry about everybody. You all died. Uh, uh, yeah, second one will hit. That's a 23 to hit. And then that is the IOD8. So, yeah. And then. And then. And then. There we go. Uh, 9, 17, uh, 21 more points of piercing damage. Nice. Uh, Rakir, Ingve screams, fill the air. You guys turn around, and there are lightning men, for lack of a better term, uh, near the rear attacking. Uh, Dave has been kind of shocked backwards. Azari's filling the sky with arrows uh three globes of electrical energy appear from azari's and hover towards the refugees azari three d12s one at a time please yeah well blah no d12 uh 10 uh second one is Seven. Right. Last one. Third one. Eleven. Very good. Uh, one of the globes, uh, Rock here and Ingve, strikes one of the refugees and drops her. Huh? <laughs> Who wants to roll against me to see if it's Cyril? Oh no. I'll roll D since D D twelve. Deuce. Six. Not Cyril, somebody else. Uh, Dave, yours is going to uh, slam one of the refugees and then slam you. Uh, refugee. Uh, I should have rewritten this. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that hits. <laughs> uh, and on you, uh, that misses. Because that's only an eight. One uh, d eight plus four. Let's see if it's only rocking a sixteen armor class. Male. Oh, one of the refugee males is dead. Oh crap! Uh, new round. We will start with Dave, then Azari, then uh, Rakir, and then Ingve, and then me. All right. Uh, Dave is like kind of pissed and in a weird way slings his ax back on its strap and goes forward with a swing of his fist. Sure. Right. Um, well, that's going to be a 16 to hit. Yep. Okay. Um, we'll take a D four plus six cause I'm a raging and I will then attempt to grapple him as I am a tavern brawler. Uh, so that's, Eight points of bludgeoning damage, and uh, I want to grapple him. Uh, first off, as soon as you hit him, yep, uh, you get blasted by six more hit points of electrical energy. Uh, okay. Now we can grapple. Go ahead and roll off on your strength. Ooh, first nat 20 of the night. Well, that's going to put me at, uh, it ain't going to work. I only it, got 19. It slips right through you. Uh, Azari. Okay, firing another arrow. Uh, that's a 16 to hit. Hits. Uh, 
Huh? And I, I think, do. Think Scooby Doo monster on this creature. Oh, nice. And I do another so fourteen Scooby points kind of, of piercing damage. Got it. Um, and that's it. Uh, Rock here. Uh, you're trying to push through the crowd. Uh to try and get to one of these or do you want to hang back and make sure that uh, you aren't hit from your six? Um, I, I don't think that there's any, any, any chance I'm going to get hit from behind and, and my, uh, my uh, friends are, are, are in danger. I can hear the screaming and I, and I want to find out where the screaming is coming for so I can really, really understand it. Um, so I'm, I'm going to move towards, I have a nat, uh, my natural movement rate is 40. I don't know how close I can get. If I can get close enough, I'll probably try to throw a dart at it. Oh, yeah, you, you should be able to throw a dart at it. I, I have to get 20 feet to my range. If not, yeah, if it's... You'll be fine. Okay, okay. So, I, yeah, I'll, I'll get in range, and the one on that's closer to Azari is the one that I want to hit. Okay. Because I think I may have pissed off the sorry earlier. I don't want to keep this on me. So yeah, that's a twenty-one. Hits. Hit with a dart. It will do an outstanding amount of seven hit points. Of, no, sorry, six. It's plus three. Six hit points of uh, piercing damage. You notice that the electricity starts to short out, and the figure is starting to become disruptive, you notice that the three globes uh, are also shorting out and losing its potency. Uh, next up, Ingve. Is the water stopping? Oh, Sorry. no. No, oh, not okay. at all. No, you said it, they were kind of fading out, so I was thinking... Throw it in the, the water. The, the creatures are... Yeah, that's uh, what I'm saying. Out. They're, they're the, electric the aid, so I was like, is like the turbines starting to nope, slow down? Tur turbines are full power on. You can hear uh, Edith Peel record playing in the background. <laughs> nice. Uh, is uh, do I notice if uh, Dave is still uh, grappled with one of these things? Dave, I didn't Dave has get it. Scorch marks all over his fist because he was trying to do the love hug on it. Okay, <laughs> but they're clear. The water. They're clear. Right. Okay. They are separated. Okay. Ingve throws his hands forward like this, and uh, a shaft of light comes down. Then he moves his hands apart, and it splits. And the two uh, uh, the two electric creatures will have to do a Constitution check. Uh, Fourteen is the DC. What kind of damage is this? This is going to be radiant damage. Sure. That works. Uh, creature on Dave. Uh, two, that's going to fail. Creature on uh, Azari. 18, and what was it, Khan? Yeah. Nine. Oh, uh, 21. 21, so one saves. Okay. One saves. But it's still coming down on him, so he'll have to do a save each turn. Um, it, it's Moonbeam. Um, so, uh, yeah, the... Let's see. The one that failed takes uh, four points of damage. And let me see if they take anything if they save. If they take half. Uh, and the other takes two uh, points of damage because it's saved. Cool. Uh, this time, uh, let me see what the, the one on Dave. Ooh. Here's where it gets ugly. Uh, the one on Azari. Okay, boys and girls, <laughs> a lightning bolt erupts from both of them. The first lightning bolt goes for two uh, rock here. Second one goes after one, Dave. Uh, rock here, it did not like the dart in the crotch. Uh, so I need both of you to make a save, please, on dexterity. And you might want to make this. <laughs> <laughs> Let's say 19 make it. Uh, 19 makes it. You'll get half. Thank you. I'm plus three on dex. And I'm going to see, do I have proficiency? Yeah, because I'm plus five saving throw. So I do have proficiency in this. Okay. Sure. 
13 plus 5 equals 18. Uh, you'll also take half. Now, assuming I don't roll four twos again, uh, this is still going to hurt. Mm. Ooh, that's going to hurt real bad. <laughs> uh, and, oh, my God. Uh, 24, half to 12. Both of you wow. take 12 electrical damage right in the chest. Uh, does uh, Azari, there are two globes still active, D12 against me. Eight. And? Five. Uh, Reroll. Oh, okay. Ten. Uh, another male goes down. Yeah. Oh, Damn. shit. Uh, top of the order, Dave, you got this smoking hole in your chest. <laughs> You're getting your shit pushed in. <laughs> So, oh, by the way, folks, uh, mature audience is only. <laughs> yeah, mature. <laughs> well, then. Visual. I'm electrically having your shit pushed in. <laughs> We're cattle prod your ass now. <laughs> You're in the Texas penitentiary. So I'm Dave of Vaughn. I hit things. Uh, that's a 25 to hit. Mm -hmm. And. They're I translucent, love, Frank. <laughs> I, I love melee. It helps uh, if you use a D12. Yeah. Uh, 11 plus uh, 6, 17 points of bludgeoning. Or slashing, whatever the fuck. Sorry. Take 9 retribution. That's fine. Oh. Ooh. I, I'll wear your ass down sooner or later. Azari, you're up. Okay. Here we go. Oh, uh, well, yeah, that's a 16 to hit. I'm fine. I've eight hit points. <laughs> fine. A flesh wound. You'll be fine. Uh, 11, fine. More, 11 more points of piercing. Back damage. here, I'll bite your kneecaps. Uh, give me a D4, Azari. Okay. Four. Azari's creature explodes and four points of illumination on the ceiling uh, explode with it, uh, causing some partial darkness in this particular region. Uh, Rock here, uh, again with a smoke and hole. What do you want to do? <laughs> the only one Sorry. left is Dave. I'll I'll throw a uh, a um, dart at the one Dave's, but I'm going to make sure since the lightning bolt is so so powerful that's coming from him, I'm going to make sure that that the uh, that the villager is safe, and I'm going to you know grab one and put it right behind me, but I'm going to hold on to it. Okay, sure. I'm going to hold on to it. I'm not I'm I'm, I'm not going to let you know I'm not going to let them go because I don't want them to you know get that lightning bolt. I want to you know protect them. Roll the hit and then roll to see if you touch the villager inappropriately. <laughs> First is gonna be the the, the dart, right? Correct. Is that the part where That's he gonna be accidentally stabs 14. him in the neck? <laughs> 14. <laughs> 14 does hit. <laughs> 14 uh, of again, this will be six hit points of um, piercing damage from a dart. Okay, now see if you touch the villager inappropriately. Yeah. <laughs> They're gonna be some inappropriate touch. Five. <laughs> yeah, you uh let's see, male or female. It's a female. <laughs> it's a boob. You you will be uh atoning for sexual harassment at a later time. Ingve, uh much like uh, Azari's Dave's is starting to short out, it looks like. Okay. Are are both creatures still up or one is down and the other? Okay. The, one the is beams gone. are still it's, going. It's gone. Oh, yeah. The Ingvang's concentrating. So, uh, constitution check for the one that's still standing. Uh, that's a five plus uh, three. It's going to take 15 points <laughs> of radiant damage. Okay. What else are you doing? Uh, uh, that I'm concentrating, so I can't do anything else, really. This is the important role because it's probably his last. Udo, it's going to do a slam attack. Uh, 
It gets two of those, uh, nine, ten, or a civilian. Uno, Dave, uh, nine, civilian. <laughs> Ouch. So, Dave, it attempts to grab you by the back of the hair and just bitch chunk you into the grave. Uh, not with that roll. That's a five <laughs> plus uh, three. A nat 20, number two of the night. That, <laughs> oh, that, Jesus. I'm, We've I'm lost pretty, another civilian, I'm boys. Sure you have lost another civilian. Uh, it, is it the sexually harassed one? We might not know. It's probably uh, not. <laughs> Only three hit points of damage, uh, so it's charred. It will live, and it is a male. Uh, mm. Top of the order, Dave. You notice that your opponent is Squid. Fuck yeah! <laughs> Not twenty. Nice. Mm. I need to roll another twelve. Uh. Math is too hard. Seven and nine. You'll kill it. Yeah. 16, 16. points yeah. plus six. 22 okay. points of damage. Are you ready to see how much you get in rebuttal? Yes, oh, I am. <laughs> Five and four, nine more damage. Roll me a it D4. Fall down. Oh, shit. Okay. D4 so, for what? me, Dave. What one? D4. Uh, one. Uh, a singular light pew, explodes as Dave finishes off his opponent and slumps directly over it, but it is no longer there. So he is down, face down on the grate. Uh, the general throng is still in full on panic mode. A quick look around. Most of the lights are still active. The turbines are going. Uh, Somewhere Adam West is going to appear. Uh, and then uh, if you don't get that joke, you're too young for it. But uh, <laughs> there appear to be no more opponents, uh, and which is good because smoke rises off Dave. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Are we still mm. turn-based at this point, or can we? No, uh, I need somebody to roll D12 against me. If I win, the crowd is going to split in two directions. If you win, they will stay in one direction. Who wants to roll? Nobody's volunteering. I'll do it. <laughs> I'm unconscious. Nine. They all stay in one direction. Odd is forward, even is retreat. Odd, forward ever forward. They scamper past Dave, who is still face down on the grate. <laughs> They're like, bye, sucker! <laughs> Dra dragging the injured one with the smoking eyebrow. Wow. Okay. Uh, who among us, besides Dave, is hurt really bad? Well, okay. I'm not that, I mean, I have less than half my hit points. Okay. All right. Uh, but you're, you're, close, you're close to me, right? Yes, but okay. I, 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 don't, I don't have my hands on you like I have my hands on someone else. Apparently. I, I apologize, Scott. I just read your uh, last I'm message. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, wow. Inbe extends his arms, and he's extending the spell, and uh, he's going to cast Cure Wounds on uh, Dave uh, for 18 points of healing. You feel much better. Yeah. And uh, yeah, he's going to give a healing word uh, for everyone around him in the radius for eight points of Ooh. healing. That will not help uh, the scorched earth one. He's out. Um, he's, he's past your range. Is yeah. there... they, they are headed towards the door. Is he still alive? The one that's scorched? Okay. What do you got, Azari? Uh, that, so pretty much all the people are running right now to the door. Correct. Um, Azari will turn and yell at them to stand your ground. Um, and he'll use... Intimidation. Uh, yeah. Uh... 
Uh, that is 19, 21. Nice. Uh, they freeze in place. We are not without merit, people. Some will live, some will die. That is the chance we take going home. They immediately start screaming, I don't want to die, I don't want to die. No one die. wishes to die, but it may happen. I mean, Steal yourself. You, you pick Dave up and he's got horizontal lines right. from landing on the great <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Is Mr. Scorched Earth uh, within 60 feet of me? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Uh, huh? Yeah, I'll say he is. Oh, okay. Yeah, Ingve is going to call like for a 60 foot radius the, the spirit totem, which is the spectral raven. And the, for, for a minute, they're all going to take uh, nine points of healing. Go ahead and roll a d20 straight up since all you're right. calling on these spectral forces. Right. Uh, that would be 18. Okay. All right. So. Yay, you got a good Raven one. comes <laughs> in. Everybody within 60 feet get, gets nine additional points for a minute. So <laughs> for a minute? Mm-hmm. Down below the rats. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, they're the rats are jacked now. That's good. <laughs> they're like, thanks, he Did you read my message, Frank? <clears throat> Uh, they, those hit points only last one hour one nine one minute uh it it's one minute so it's each round there oh yeah uh dave is sorry and Ingrid, well, we'll all get healed checks. all the way up what kind of what, check? Percep perception Ooh. okay nine nice uh, 20 26 same so uh, wasted 20 Dave and Azari, uh, as the smoke kind of drifts off, you kind of look around, figuring out what's going on, and you look over at Rakir, who's, who's got his hand right here on uh, one of the villagers' chest. That works great. What? <laughs> <laughs> it's the soccer mom block. <laughs> yeah. They don't have seatbelts in this place. Uh she takes a step back <laughs> and rock here does not move his hand at all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to ignore it. Um, and look for the bot. Like, are did these, did these electrical creatures, did they leave any like uh residue pieces or anything, or did they pretty much just short out and that was it? Short it out, pop the uh light bulbs above, and that's it, they're all gone. Mm -hmm. Okay, damn. I was and all five turbines something. are just... All right, well. We need to find our way out. Keep moving. Okay. Yep. Just keep keep moving. Peck Peck is at the door. You know, hold the fort down. Yeah, uh, yes. Points out, uh, door's locked. You want me to break it down, boss? Sure. If you can. Uh, uh, I can't do it. <laughs> are these are these big metal doors? They are. She. Um. Can we see any of the? I guess go to that um, lever station that everybody hey, was the Dave lever has broken door before. Where hinges? Uh, Dave, hinges? Hinges are on the inside. Dave, this door is metal. It is not uh, wood or... Hey, Azari, resting. shut up and let him break his axe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to look at the, uh, paneling, the uh, lever paneling and see if there's anything that might be... Uh, there were buttons, right? Like, mm -hmm. see if there's any buttons or anything that may indicate a door. Just... The, the levers are in the center. There are four buttons of different colors on either side. Is there a big red one? <laughs> there's a red a green, a blue, and a clear. Okay. Is there any button? Push the red it? one. Push. Push any button that may kind of look that might indicate that it'd be that a, the door that he's trying maybe is like, why not? Is it like to the left? 
the buttons on the left uh, like closer to that one or give me an intelligence chart. Yeah, that's a four. Mm. It's all Greek to me. Yep. <laughs> What's a Greek? <laughs> it might even be Cyrillic. You aren't really sure. <laughs> <laughs> right. Ancient language. Yeah, um, so you got four but the buttons on either side are the same color. I'll uh try one button at a time. I'll try the starting like top down and just see what action happens by pressing each but the the red i'll i actually i'll switch it up i won't start with the red because the red Coward. just sounds bad i'll start at the bottom work my way up clear okay so i'll hit the clear button the left or the right uh left click uh and a large spotlight illuminates the panel and then tips towards in front of you mm -hmm and then tips back towards you, kind of giving you a streak of illumination, very bright. Uh, okay. If you look up, it kind of hurts your eyes. I'll click, <laughs> click that button again. Does it shut it off or does it Shuts continue? It off. Okay, uh, we'll go the next one up. Uh, blue. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Nothing. Okay, I'll click the blue button again. Okay. Nothing, okay. Uh, then we'll go up to the next one. The uh, green? green? Yep. You're still on the left side, right? Yes, yeah. <clears throat> Perception check. Okay. Natural 20, 27. You hear a, a, a buzz, and if you're holding it in, it's a constant buzz coming from the door that you came through. Okay. Bees! Ah! <laughs> Azari will take his hand off buzzing and the buzzing stop. stop. He'll try the exact same, the green button on the opposite side. Uh, who's over on the right side? Dave, I know, is over there. Uh, Rakir and Ingve, are you guys over there with him? Or are you watching Azari? I'm, I'm, I'm watching Azari entranced. <laughs> Ingve, where are you at? Uh, I'm by the group and Dave, I think. Yeah. So open up the healing. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> yeah. Dave and Ingve, you hear uh, the door buzzing. I mean, it's a pretty loud buzz. Push that door. Uh, okay. Midvale. Genius. I told you the hinges are on the inside. <laughs> he said push door. <laughs> he, yeah, he did say push door. <laughs> Sorry, said Sorry. Pull the door. Is there okay. a handle? <laughs> <laughs> door opens. <laughs> and then I'll release the button. Uh, you hear a click, uh, okay. David. I'll hold on to the door. Okay. okay. Door open. Do I can push the red button? <laughs> I will push the red button on the I just to see. I'm, I'm now I'm curious. Is like it, the red button has to do something, so I'll push the red button on the left side, not the right side. You hear nothing. Ooh! Don't put it on the left side. <laughs> that door's gonna. <laughs> I know it. I just know it. Let Dave go in first. Oh. <laughs> oh, everything in me wants to push the red button on the right <laughs> side now. They're, they're, oh my God, they're irresistible. Red buttons are irresistible, man. So I heard nothing, like no sounds, anything on the left side. Dave? Yeah. Step we know how to open it, so step away from the door. Okay. I'll push the door yeah. slide, slide shut. Okay. Uh, is there like a hole or anything that Dave can see to the other side of the room? Or is it just a straight metal door? There's no like window or uh, like there, a small there, opening. To... Through the door on the right looks uh -huh. exactly like the door on the left. Okay. Stairwell going up. Okay. I wonder if it'll shut all the sluiceways if I press the button. 
like power it down. Huh. Everyone prepare yourselves. <laughs> I will uh, press the red button on the right. Uh, Dave ready to get mad. Dave and Ingve, you hear a click. Now, Dave, try the try to pull the door open again. Mm. Ah, locking mechanism. Okay, I will press the green button on the right side again. It buzzes. Open now. Opens the door. Okay. So it seems to be a locking mechanism for that side. Dave lets go of the door handle and then tries to open it again once it closes. You never re-pushed the button, did you, Azar? No, huh? Yeah, you can open it. All right, everyone through it the doors. unlocked. Let's keep moving. Uh, okay. Who's going up the stairs first? Dave. Dave leads the charge. Azari, you... <laughs> hoping that you don't get locked yeah. out. Yeah. Uh, oh, don't miss the door. As you run, uh, Rakir is much faster than you. He will get to the door. As the door, much. as the door begins to shut, you get to it. Uh, you know what? D twelve against me. Okay. Three. No. What the fuck is my D twelve? There we go. Eight. Uh, you you get there. Put your hand in. Or paw, as the case may be. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and get in the door. Everybody is just like the other side. Mm. At the top, Dave, uh, you come to another landing. There's another door, just like the other side. Hinges where? Uh, hinges are on the inside. Mm. Paul. <laughs> If nothing else, Murder Hobo Inc. tells you how doors work. <laughs> we do. It's <laughs> educational. Uh, Dave, sunlight fills your eyes, uh, mm. and an open the field sun. of grassland is uh, ahead of you. Out, uh, just outside the door, you can hear the rushing of the river. Dave, Dave actually is made pretty happy by this and is going to like move out into the sunlight get his eyes to adjust even faster by blinking. You are on the main land. As everybody comes out basking in the sunlight, quick look around reveals uh, high grasses, colorful wildflowers, uh, and of course the rushing river behind you. Azari emerges last with Rakir, uh, and all appears to be good. Uh, you are on the right side where Ba is. Uh, now you just have to get back there. All right. Let's continue our trek back home. How many did we lose? You lost two males. Uh, one male also lost all his eyebrows. Uh, the female will be filing sexual harassment papers with HR later. Yeah, I was about to say, <laughs> Rakir's going to get called to HR. I, I mean, I was just trying to protect her, you know? He's gonna there, there, there's a difference before. between there's a difference between a pat on the butt and grabbing a butt. He's going to have to meet with Gizbal later about this. <laughs> <laughs> you will be going through training. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And because of you, so will everybody else. Yeah. yeah. Go. Oh, hey, <laughs> thanks, Ricky. <laughs> so you like to touch boobs without asking. <laughs> Let's do a place for, for her own good. For her own good. There was lightning. Show us a sexual harassment doll where, where he touched you. <laughs> uh, the good news is it's early afternoon. Uh, bad news is, uh, somebody or everybody give me survival checks. Hey, hey, you don't touch me there. This is my no no oh, square, yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, <laughs> wait, that's a d12 with the wow, 15, uh, 18. Uh, God, are you using like a d4 on all your rolls tonight? <laughs> 20. <laughs> uh, Dave, Azari, and Ingve. You surmise, uh, if you can guess correctly and kind of hit the hypotenuse, 
you might be five days out of Ba if you follow the river the safe way uh, and get to that old stone uh, bridge that you guys don't know what it was. It was the asphalt bridge. Uh, it might take seven days. Uh, keeping in mind, because your rolls were high enough, that uh, cutting the hypotenuse would take you right through your trials area. That the Swamp of Cyrus? <laughs> well, the tar pits will be out. You won't have to worry about those anymore. Okay. But you'll uh, go right through the hunting lands with oh, uh, the refugees. So yeah. now you have to decide. But we need food anyway, right? Yeah, you, that's You do that's need true. food, but you'll have to risk crossing the open tundra that none of you have been through uh, or taking the safe path along the river. Uh, yeah, and the safe path adds two days to the journey. It adds two days. The chance of getting lost are, is almost nil. Yeah. Um, anybody can see that. Mm. And I'll be honest, there will be a percentage role in the future if you do the hypotenuse. Right. Let's take the road. We know. Yeah. Percentage rolls are terrible. <laughs> they are, especially when Dave's making them. <laughs> so we're going the seven day journey? Yeah. Uh, that's what Ingbe suggests. So. Who are we killing? Uh, I'm sorry. Are, Who are we what? killing? Uh, you, you guys have opted to go. Uh, the motion has been made to follow the safe route, i.e. follow the river, find the bridge, and go the way you know how to go to Bob, because if you cut across inland, none of you have ever been there, but you know it's going to take you right through the hunting grounds where you did your test. Which when and, we went through the hunting just, grounds, all we ran into were some... Chickens and one wolf. There was the buffalo and the, the dire good wolf. news is it's starting to rain. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be fine unless it starts to rain. Yeah, Dave likes rain. So uh your choice doesn't matter to me either way. Seven days along the river, five days cutting across overland. Who knows? You might meet new friends, uh, new experiences. Sea places, maybe the French Riviera is nearby here, or, or it could be everything in Louisiana. <laughs> I was about to say, <laughs> it's Gulf Shores, uh, <laughs> Orange uh, Beach, ladies and gentlemen, inland. <laughs> so, we're going to take the oh, oh. Aren't, aren't, aren't we hunters? Yep, uh, you four are. <laughs> Or may else, not so much. <laughs> if we come back with no civilians, you won't be very victorious. And especially since Azari's sister is pretty much out of commission. Yeah, people will like. How you is more. Azari's sister doing? Catatonic. Catatonic. Hmm. Well, let us take the let us take the safer journey, even though. Uh -huh. hmm. I wish to explore the unknown. But not at the expense of our people. Correct. You travel the rest of the day on foot. Uh, the people are kind of tired. They're kind of hungry. All the meat you guys got uh, on the island is still viable today. Uh -huh. So you'll be able to feed them. Uh, it is mid-afternoon or early afternoon. So you guys can eat here where you know it's fairly safe. Uh, or you can travel a little bit away, hoping to find a safer spot. Let's eat here now. Have yeah. Rest and we can <clears throat> go a bit more into the night. Everybody gets a short rest, so regain what you want if you need it. Uh, you head south. I'm sorry, you head north uh, because my map skills suck. Uh, you head north along the river. Uh, it's very nice. Uh, a lot of high grasses, zero signs of passing, uh, except every once in a while, uh, the trail that you are making is bisected. Uh, it's near uh, shallower waters. You can surmise without rolls that uh, creatures here 
drink from the river on a regular basis. Uh, your instincts would tell you uh, you could probably wait here and maybe kill stuff for meat or get the hell out of here because you don't know. Predators are likely to be here too. Correct. Uh-huh. So Predators you- have nice eyes. Um, <laughs> and boobs. <laughs> eyes and boobs. Uh, it is still raining. It's not lightning. Uh, it's not a thunderstorm. It's just a perpetual rain uh, giving the area soak and making it what it is. Very green, very lush area. Uh, this area is somewhat similar uh, to the area that you guys all grew up in around by, except there are trees uh, that are kind of different, a uh, different temperate zone. Uh, but there are trees, so, you know, uh, maybe predators hanging out in the trees, maybe not. As you continue on, uh, night or day one comes to an end. Uh, I will need the first three victim. I mean, first three watchmen. Uh, who wants first, second, and third? I'll take first. I'll take second. Third. Day third. Uh, Rock here, D12. Day will sleep. That's a six. Uh, still raining. Uh, Ozari, D12. Two. Uh, still raining. Ingve. Seven. Still raining. <laughs> it rains the whole day, making yeah. fire impossible. Uh, the next <clears throat> morning, everybody wakes up with cold chills. Uh, the weather forecast for the day. All rain. Oh, that says disaster. Uh, <laughs> uh, Rock here, give me a D4. One B in the direction you're going, two B in the direction of the right. Wow. <laughs> Four. Uh, across the river, uh, there is a lot of damage, trees down. Uh, it appears as though some kind of cyclone esque uh, weather has hit. Peck Peck and the few remaining members of his tribe look across in sadness as tears stream down their eyes like somebody's littering uh, the river. And uh, they're very sullen all day long. Uh, Rain will continue because of the general nature. Uh, You guys will travel till midday. This will be the end of your supplies on this day. So if you ration it out, Everybody can have a little bit at lunch and a little bit at dinner, and you'll be fine. Uh, otherwise, you're going to have to look for raiding parties. Mm. Your choice. We're going to have to do the parties anyway. Going to do it in daylight? I would think, right? So, no. If we can get... Maybe our better option is to suffer through the day, let the people secure themselves. Okay. Um, and we break break for camp a bit earlier. That way we can spend an hour or two, maybe three hunting and still come back and protect while they have the ability to see and watch the area. Right. Okay. So like, you guys... Park camp. Uh, Animals a come to early. water hole at hot day. So, mm-hmm. yeah, you, so you, well, it's raining. Yeah. <laughs> Not no Indiana good right now. <laughs> uh, so, you guys pull up camp short. Uh, how do you want to go about the hunting parties? Do you four want to go off? Uh, two of you want to go off and leave two behind? What do you want to do? I think two and two would probably be the best. Who wants to hunt? Dave wants to hunt. DM is not shocked. Azari will go. DM not shocked again. Uh, <laughs> Rakir and Ingve. Uh, well, first, Dave, go ahead and roll a D4. Sure. Three. It's going to take you guys three hours to find anything worth killing. 
D or uh, Rakir D four for me. One. <clears throat> As you guys make camp, Azari, Dave, and Peck Peck reluctantly <laughs> goes off to go hunt. Uh, Rakir and Ingve, you guys find a nice spot still in the high grasses, uh, but enough of camouflage to uh, hide you from any predators. There are no cross paths here. Uh, there's a little bit of a drop in the river, so you know any animals wouldn't get water here anyway. Both of you need to make a perception check. 25. Not That's going to be an 18. You're hunting. Oh. <laughs> 21 for Ingve. 18. Ingve for- and Rakir, you hear voices. Shit. Okay. Voices? Yep. And every once in a while, whoosh, the crack of a wife's husband whip. Wow. <laughs> oh, man. That's funny. And there, there's a name for that, but I can't remember what it is. <laughs> Cat whipped. Sure, we'll go with that. We'll go with that. Uh, it appears to be coming from the left side, i.e. the river. There's a van! <laughs> Down by the river. Right, I, I will try to sneak down there and see if I can't get a look. So, uh, Inve, would you? I I can move pretty quick and pretty quietly. Could you stay with the villagers while yeah. I go see what's going on? Yeah, I'll try to keep everybody quiet. Okay, straight try up to keep twenty there, Rock here. What you, is it? Straight up D twenty. Oh, Make sure you don't call in. Because Inve trusts Rock here's, uh <laughs> ability to tell the tell the story. <laughs> No, Great he nine, doesn't. But, but with, with no modification, that's a nine. So you're fine. You get right to the edge. Uh, there's a lot of high grasses there. <laughs> and you see, coming from ahead of you, down the river, is a raft. Uh, and it looks like some of your old friends, uh, the slavers, are oh. on it. And in the center of the raft are uh, huddled together, tied with vines, uh, kind of look like Peck Peck's people. How many, uh, how many slavers? I think there's four, but let me check. Yes, on this one, there's four. One in each corner, uh, one in the back is whoosh. Stay down! What's my range? Uh, they're in the middle of it, so maybe 30 feet. And they're just, this is not the rapid area, but they're moving along pretty quick. Okay, how, how I, I want to throw some darts at them. Uh, how many, how many, I'm trying to, are they going with the current or against the current? With the current, same direction you guys went. Okay. You notice that none of these people came from Ba. Yep. These yep. are these are elves, half elves, aka Peck Peck's people. Yeah, still don't like them. Um, so don't Call like them. down the wrath. <laughs> now I'll uh, I'll I'm gonna try to throw a dart and hit one, and then immediately drop down. Sure. Uh, front left, front far right. The right one with the whip. Backside. Gotcha. Go ahead. Fuck. One of the slaves screams out in pain <laughs> as wow. the dart launches in its forehead. Wow. Uh, the crack of a whip hits it. Uh, let's see if it knocks the dart off. Uh, yeah, it knocks the dart off. A uh, trickle of blood clearly can be seen as you hide it in the reeds, uh, and the slave just goes to town. Uh, and they just keep floating down the river. I got stung. I got stung. All right, I, I'm going to go back to Ingve. I was hoping to do Big better than that. Big Big ass and uh, um, I'm saying, Ingve, there's slavers here with some of Peck Peck's people. Oh, what do you think we should do? Ingve, I didn't see shit. <laughs> I didn't see shit. 
I, I mean, I'm going to tell Nick Bay what happened, and, and that I tried my best to kill the the person with the whip, but 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 I missed and accidentally hit one of the, the one of Petbex people. Female. Mm. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Just, what, what part of the woods did that happen there? Like, like my own little Cuomo here. Um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> nice. he, he's that. He, yeah, he's now governor for the state of New we're, York. We're going to impeach you here, so. <laughs> oh man, it's so much easier if you just resign and back up. Yeah, hey, how, exactly. how much damage did you do to that poor woman? Yeah. What, what's the damage on your dart? Go ahead and roll. Oh, it. sorry. Because it's Ooh, possible yeah, you may have rolled that, them. huh? All right. Yeah, it, you might have given her a lobotomy. Oh, um, seven hit points of damage. Oh yeah, she's gonna be, she's gonna need a helmet or something. She's hurt. I rolled <laughs> and, and, four. and the whipping yeah. didn't help. <laughs> oh, <laughs> probably <laughs> killed her. Uh, meanwhile, Azari, oh. Peck, Peck, and Dave, you guys are creeping through the grasslands, uh, and it seems like forever. Uh, you have picked up a trail. Probably from uh, Family Circus, <laughs> and you're just moving about. This uh, happened every time we hunt with Peck Peck. <laughs> well, Peck Peck's behind you. He's learned his lesson. Screw that. I'm not stepping in front of you. Uh, you two go ahead and roll survival checks or nature checks, rather. Let's see if you pick up on it. Nature. Oh, that one's real good. That's plus zero, so fifteen. 17. Uh, you both figure out that you are hot on the trail because the hot steaming uh, pellets uh, indicate that uh, something has passed here recently. As you creep through the woods or the high grasses, give me your stealth checks, and that includes Peck Peck. Peck Peck's a fucking magician, nice. man. 24. 19. Uh, all three of you creep slowly up. Uh, you're flanking uh, Azari. Whatever side Dave is on, Peck Peck is on the other side. <laughs> He's not doing this anymore. Uh, you guys kind of move aside the high grasses, and there's a creature, and it's kind of uh, kind of looks like bovine, but it has a, a, a large nose that tapers off. Uh, it stands maybe five feet high at the shoulder blade. The head is kind of misshapen, and the proboscis, the nose, is kind of hooked. Uh, and it is it does not appear flexible. It appears to be rigid. Uh, and it is snuffling its way through Sesame Street here, trying to figure out what to eat. Mr. Snuffleupagus. Hmm. But this thing, it's about the size of a cow. So okay. it's going to have some meat on it. I'm going to look at Peck Peck and kind of give him, uh, I'll just see if he notices and either like thumbs up or thumbs down to him. Which the, and then. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I will uh, give. Uh, Posing for a statue, Dave. Yeah, <laughs> I will uh, pull my bow and fire on it. I guess. Yeah. You and Dave uh, give it a fling. Peck Peck will also throw his spear at it. Yeah, I'm sure that's going to hit it. Does this magic cow get more than a 20 armor class? Nope, it has an 11, and Peck Peck hit it too. Awesome for Peck Peck. Where's that? Nice. Oh, wow. I get to use a murder hobo die. <laughs> uh, that's 12 points of piercing damage. Four. That's 10 points of piercing damage. It drops. All three of you hit it, and it just <clears throat> drops. Uh, the spears and arrows are sticking up out of it. It gives a low uh, before it expires. Uh, yeah, we'll step forward and start skinning. Claim my javelin. Take back. my arrow and then kind of keep a lookout for anything else coming around if something sure. else or uh Azari, you have danger you're, sense. You're mm -hmm. skinning it, so do your animal handling. And you know what? Before you do that, D12 against me. Yeah. Seven. 
Eight. Sure. Is that it? Yeah, that's eight. It is not pregnant. Are there some? Are there some uh, saplings? Extra food for us. <laughs> Veal. Veal's on the table. Veal's nice. on the table, boy. Uh, what did you say, Dave? Uh, are there some uh, smallish, straight-grown trees around? Uh, maybe one or two, kind of scrub trees. If I can cut a straightish one down so we can use it to uh, haul the carcass. Sure. Azari, what's your animal handling? 24. Oh, yeah, you're you're butchering this like uh, you're an avatar. Uh, <laughs> Dave, as you're hacking away at a tree, you know, singing a cool work song, give me a perception check. Uh, fifteen. Azar, you you even have white paper and stickers. I mean, you're just <laughs> 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 Who wanted the rough roast? <laughs> it weighs two pounds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Dave, as you're clearing down the tree, uh, Peck Peck is helping Azari because fuck you, you've nearly got him killed twice. Uh, you need to roll a perception check. Uh, 14. Right before you strike on one of the limbs, you notice it quivers a little bit. And you kind of feel the ground shaking. Now, keeping in mind, uh, there's still a misty rain going on. Dave's thoughts go immediately to a stampede. Sure. You want to climb the tree before you cut it down? No. Okay. Keep cutting on it? Yep. Just be There's, aware of it. Uh, as you do so, uh, another reverberation in the ground, another quiver on uh, any of the remaining branches. Uh, and these branches aren't thick. They aren't thin. Uh, you know, maybe uh, the diameter of one or two fingers but whatever's coming is enough to, so you might want to look around for a mobile home. <laughs> uh, as Azari and Peck Peck are Benny Hanna in this uh, prairie cow. Uh, do you want to look around again, Dave, or you just want to keep cutting? No, I'll look around again. Perception. Oh, that's much better. Uh, 24. Uh, you decide to, you know, do a, one arm raised, get a little bit above the grasses. There's something out there, uh, uh, about 300 yards, but it's big enough that you can see. Give me an arcana check. It looks like one thing. Looks like one thing, only big. Oh, big. okay. Um, an arcana check. <clears throat> You can do it. No, we can't. No, he can't. He's far better. We're going to Natural die. 20, 18. Um, <laughs> ah, showed you, fuckers. Ah. <laughs> Whatever this thing is, is about 12 to 14 feet tall. And it has like an eight foot horn sticking out of it. Ah. You're pretty sure this is what they call one of them their unicorns. Uh, sorry, but there's you, a unicorn. But you didn't think it was this large. Azari, give me a perception check to see if you heard his uh, incessant babbling. <laughs> wow. Uh, probably 23. Uh, yeah, you heard him. Peck Peck's like, oh, let's see if Peck Peck heard him. No, you Peck, can't hear Peck, the Peck just yells. wipes his forehead and just leaves a great big blood streak on it. Peck Peck heard me, but he ignored it anyway. Little fucker. <laughs> huh. That's some for him. Uh, uh, it's I a heard... big unicorn. I have you, heard you should unicorn? keep yelling. Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Why would a unicorn be around here? Um, you want me to go get it? No. Um, is this thing skinned or are we still like mid skin and he like are we mid fillet or are we done? 
Uh, you, you've got, give me a percentage roll. Okay. 200 yards. What the fuck? I can't read this. 34. It, it, is, it is not approaching you. So 66% of the way done. Okay. You got 34% left. Uh, you got a good four or five days worth of meat. Okay. Peck Peck is still skinning. Uh, Peck Peck, I'm going to see what this is. Uh, if something comes after you, come. Uh, I'm more concerned about your well being if you're going to go check on that ding dong. Well, let's pack what we have and we'll. We've got several days worth of food, which. If we'll need to, we can hunt one more time. So we'll grab what we have and go. Okay. To where Dave's at? Yes. But I will not just come walking up. I will stealth stealth my way up. So that way, if it's there, it only knows that Dave is there. And I can use Dave as a first marker. <laughs> did, you, did you ever see Silverado? Yeah. Remember when Kevin Costner was kind of swinging in the jail? Yeah, yeah. Trying to uh -huh. swing. That's what Dave's doing, but he's looking out on the prairie. <laughs> um, I'm going to look out and see. Like, There's from... a huge fucking creature. I mean, it's pretty far away. It's like yeah. Vegas miles, but it's pretty fucking huge. And it has this giant horn on it. And you, now that you've moved, you can feel. The rumbling of the, oh, shit. Yeah. Dave, get down. That is not a unicorn. Peck Peck says, what is that? You don't know. It's not a unicorn. A unicorn is a creature of great good and safety. You should not feel terror in, a, in your Dave, heart. Dave, D12 you. against me. Dave, Dave feels no terror. Dave's an idiot. Nine. That, that thing is 14 feet tall from several hundred yards away. That means it is not 14 feet tall. That means it is much bigger than that. No, Dave, say it only that big. <laughs> <laughs> it's only that big from wait, this far away. Wait. It's getting bigger. <laughs> no shit. Uh, <laughs> Dave, it is, it is not headed your way. Oh. It seems to be, I don't know, grazing or dicking around, watching TV. You aren't sure what it's doing. Not coming this way. Not coming this I'll, way. I'll drop out of the tree. Cool. Now it's coming this you, way. You check your uh, hog irons and jump up on your horse. <laughs> now, I'm, now I'm curious what it is. It's a really big fucking rhino. It's something big. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, so you can take Dave back, grab the rest of the meat. Yep. Uh, you got enough for a, a couple days. You guys yeah. might be able to make it back. Uh, you get back. Uh, Ingve, Rakir, uh, these guys are just covered in blood. Looks like a homicide scene. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but clearly they've been butchering shit. Uh, Dave or Azari, do you want to tell them what you saw? Because Peck Peck is still scared. We saw a creature that was quite large. This big. <laughs> it was great. And had a single horn uh, that was four to five feet long coming from its head. Gonna need a bigger spear to hunt that. They call them the prairie narwhals. Maybe <laughs> if we can... <laughs> <laughs> the prairie narwhals. Maybe if we can... get to the creature again, maybe not so much kill it as use it for domestication we could use it as a force against uh, other creatures that may come against us use it as protection maybe even to carry some of our injured could they ride it is that a advice? um we can try who has rope Right. Maybe it's best not to. I mean, not I, right now, Dave. Not right I, now. Yeah, I right. can talk to beasts, so <laughs> can give it a shot. Ingve, if you would come with me to this, see this, this creature, and if we can entice it to come back, then yes, I'm well versed in 
the methodology of creatures. Okay. We'll give this. I'll just happen to mention to Peck Peck, hey, Peck Peck saw some grew back on the river with yeah. a bunch of your people in chains getting whipped. Whatever. One of them was beaten to death, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> sure. One of them, you know, I, 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 you know, thought about, you know, doing something, but then one kind of like screamed and grabbed and I fell down, you know, I got down real quick, but just wanted to let you know that there are slavers taking your people down the river. Just, you know, one of those things. <laughs> just thought you should know. Just thought you should probably know. Hey, guys. Like, could have been, hey could have been your brother, you know. I I'm picturing Tony Shalhoub from Galaxy Quest. <laughs> Yeah. Hey guys, just FYI, your people are getting slaughtered. Uh, so, Azari and Ingve, did you want to go off and see if you can find this creature? Yeah, we'll see if we can. I mean, Ingve agrees. It's up to Azari. It was three hours away. Ooh, maybe maybe not. It was three hours back. Maybe uh, not. We'll, maybe we'll not skip today. that. Then, yeah. <laughs> if we run into it again, we'll. Yeah. Yeah, let's put a pin in that. <laughs> uh, who's taking first watch tonight? I'll do it I again. think Rick here. She has <laughs> D D12. That's a 10. The rain stops. Uh, who's taking second and who's taking third? I'll, I'll take, take mid watch. I'll take third. Okay, so. Rakir, give me a perception check at disadvantage. Oh. Okay, 15. I rolled a 20 and a 15, so that's actually a 23 and an 18. There is a uh, celestial happening, for lack of a better term. Uh, there's a, you can see the moon uh, high in the sky, but over to the right, uh, like a soft glow. Very soft, very faint. Off to the right, like in the heavens or on the ground? On the horizon. Way off to the horizon. All right, I'll, I'll just make note of it and, you know, say, okay, I'll, I'll tell people that I saw a bright glow off in the horizon. Is it in the direction where we think Ba is? Not even close. Buzz that way. Okay, so I'll just I'll just keep note of it and see if the glow gets brighter or it starts making noises or anything else like that. But I'll just assume that maybe I don't know. It's weird, but we've seen a lot of weird. So you know. Uh, number two, Dave D twelve. Nine. Nope. Thunderstorms roll. <laughs> oh. Uh Ingve, finish it up as you are soaked again, D12. Twelve. Uh fortunately the thunderstorms are short-lived, however, still no fire. Uh day three. Uh benefit of only wearing a loincloth. Day three uh passes uneventfully. With uh, light clouds. Very mm -hmm. nice day. Very temperate, uh, which is kind of nice. Uh, again, the path will bisect every once in a while. Nothing on the river. Uh, you're starting to, starting to recognize the area from your uh, river trip. So that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. uh, first three watches tonight. I'll do first again. D12. That's an 11. Ty will uh, we'll stay nice weather. Who wants number two? I'll take that again. Okay. 12. Who wants third? I'll take third. Uh, Jesse, I'll take, uh, sorry. <laughs> 11. Uh, night passes uneventfully. Uh, uh, nights. J12. 
day three, uneventful. Day four, light clouds again. Uh, the more you travel, uh, the stronger your refugees are getting. Uh, they form two lines, uh, and they're starting to become more adept at pointing out, hey, there's a trail here. Uh, looks like an animal, da 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 Mm -hmm. Small woodland creatures are starting to be spotted uh, as the grasses grow or shrink a little bit. So the further you get uh, to the north, the grasses start to diminish. Uh, they're still healthy. It's just, you know, how it is. Uh, as you walk across, uh, everybody D12. Eight. Eight. Or uh, Rakir and Dave, uh, as you're moving along in your respective positions in this uh, line of refugees, you notice a strange tree. It's a strange it, tree. It lacks leaves, and it appears to be glittering in the sunlight. Hmm. Is it in the direction we're going or? Off to the right. The, the think, leaves are actually like vines that are swinging. I think we need to go check it out, Dave. I really think we need to go check it out. This may be, if it's shiny, it may be one of those money trees. Hmm. Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> Money. <laughs> okay. Learn the concept of money. Yeah. <laughs> no, the, no, this time. <clears throat> our, money our, is type of magic that you can use to make people do things you want them to do. Buy yes. friends. So, so, are you two going to go off by yourself? Or are you going to let them know? Or, or are you stopping the column? I'll, I'll, I'll inform and, and say, look, Dave, if you want me to go by myself, I'll go by myself. Let me take a couple of refugees, you know, with me. Oh, no. Females. Oh, no. <laughs> you know, maybe go together, you know. Ingve, yeah. I'm going to go check something out with him. Be careful. <laughs> uh, Azari sure. and Ingve, do you want to keep the column moving? We'll keep the column moving. Yes. We we tell them that we're we're gonna keep moving. So it's a magic money tree. <laughs> we're gonna go take a look at it. Uh, Azari and Ingve, you really recognize this area. You, you're pretty sure you're coming close to the tar pits. Okay. Um, Rakir and Dave, you guys leave the trail. The grass is shorter, but it's still high enough to hide things. Both of you roll d20 for me. Twelve. Five. Uh, Rakir, you hit a gopher hole, but you do not hurt yourself. You go off into the middle of this area, and what you thought was maybe 10 feet tall is actually more like 50 feet tall. Uh, this tree is weird. It has four trunks that go up, and then the branches kind of wrap around it, uh, up to the top where it makes like a T. On either end of the T, there are these long vines <laughs> that kind of just dangle in the wind. <laughs> a high tension tower. <laughs> Got that a little while ago, but yeah. That's what I thought when you say glittery tree. Yeah, I was just like, uh oh. How tall is it? <laughs> About 50 feet. Mm. One, of, one of the tree trunks. Uh, has horizontal pegs that would allow you to climb it. Of course it does. Look here. You should climb that. I really should. <laughs> I'll keep so, watch right here. I, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and, you know, climb. Do, do these vines, they just dangle onto the ground, right? Not quite to the ground, but just kind of flitter around. I, I'm going to most certainly climb the magic money tree. Are they sparkly? I'm going to stay away from those vines because this tree might be 
some kind of bad juju. Sure. 50 feet, uh, five rolls, acrobatics at advantage. Yeah, I have pretty good acrobatics, actually. So at advantage. Look, you're way better climbing than Dave. Mm -hmm. So that's a dirty 20 is my first roll. Dirty 16 is my second roll. That's 25 on my third. On your third that one roll, wasn't dirty. On your third roll, you're pretty sure no one has ever been this high up ever. <laughs> and you can clearly see Azari and Ingve and the column moving forward. You, you look pretty cool awesome. up here. So that's a dirty 18 on my fourth roll. Okay. All right. <laughs> Nine, dirty 19 on my fifth roll. You cannot get all the way to the top of the T, but you get in pretty good distance. Give me an investigation check. Yeah, I'm not good at investigation. That is a, that's just a 12. That's intelligence base. That's a 12. Looking straight ahead and to the right, you see off in the distance, the mountain known as Ba. Do right and back a little bit, you see a mountain range. Along that mountain range or leading to it are more of these metal trees. Uh, they aren't spaced out evenly, i.e. some have fallen. But from, from this lofty height, you can see there's like three rows of these things all headed towards the mountains. I'll try my best to remember and to take like a mental image of this in my yeah. head about the direction and the distance. You know, I, that, th this is, th these, these trees have to have some type of significance. I don't know what, I, I don't know what they are. Um, sure. But I'm going to go ahead and see if I can't make my way down. Sure. Uh, you made it up, you will make it Did down. I notice anything different with Bob? Did, did, I mean, I know I'm a super distance away. Any smoke? I want to see about that. I mean, can't nothing see that. Un, nothing unusual. All right. Well, it's still a ways away, but I'll go ahead and climb my way down. Sure. Uh, you get down, tell Dave that you are certain no one has ever been to those heights and you are now a god. Yes. This is what I will say, actually. I'm certain that that I am now a climbing god. <laughs> uh, are you going to head back towards the Zari and Ingbe? Well, I'm going to pretend climb back, yes. You know, like, like mental climb. You need to carry me, Dave, for I am your deity. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, 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 I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to say that, but I'll, but I'll, but I'll think that. Azari and Ingve initiative. Oh, fuck <laughs> us. Natural 20. Oh, hey, right. I'll break. Hold on. I'll be right back. 27. Yep. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Seven, three, 10. Uh, from the right side, Azari, uh, are you leading or are you bringing up the rear? Probably leading. Okay. Uh, you hear crashing through the high grasses and a shriek come from one of the refugees as a giant war hog uh, breaks through the grass and charges the column. You oh. are up first. Uh, it is about 30 feet away and moving quickly. Uh... We'll give it a shot. Um, I will uh, close the gap to about 10 feet, mm -hmm. and then I will do my uh, lion's roar. Um, so he needs to make a DC 4. 19 on the roll. Throw. That fucking creature. Well, since it doesn't seem to stop as a return the other way, I will just fire my two arrows at it. Or I will, yeah, fire two arrows. Oh, that's a bitch. Um, 22 to hit. Yep. Okay. First one is a 
Sorry, 10 points of piercing damage. Okay. And second attack is a 20 to hit. Four. 12, 16 points of piercing damage. Nicely done. Uh, it, it leaps at uh, one to four, you, five to six, refugee. Three. Uh, it leaps at you. Uh, 17 plus 5, uh, so 22. Give, give me a strength save, and you're going to take damage. Strength save. Shit, come on. 9 plus 3 is 12 damage from a bite. <clears throat> uh, 17. You are not knocked prone. Uh, Ingve, you hear the yell, hear the twanging of the bow. Uh, and look up to see a giant warthog leaping uh, at Azari. Uh, How much damage was that again? Uh, 12. Okay. Piercing. Ow. E. Yeah, okay. Take Tusk. Uh, Ingve's going to stretch out his hand, and a sliver of ice is going to shoot out from his hand towards the warthog. Mm -hmm. I have to roll to hit. So. Let's see. Easy to hit 14. Uh 16 to hit. Yep. Okay. And uh it is gonna take nine points of piercing damage, then it's gonna explode to like a five foot radiance. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh <laughs> sorry. That's what I had. Somebody's toe-to-toe uh, -to -toe with a boar and <laughs> Mm -hmm. At least it's well, not a level five fireball. What no, does Azari no, no. and the refugee take? So it, yeah, six points. <laughs> Cross damage. <laughs> the the yeah, refugee wow. is down, but not dead. Okay. <laughs> uh, it does not get to attack this round as it's uh, wondering who put the icy <laughs> hot in its jock strap. Uh, round two, Azari, you're up. Uh, this creature's trying to hug you to death or something. Um, I will uh, um, hug. Who knows? They Fire call these it. things Pumbas. I will Pumbas. bonus action Hunter's Mark, and then I guess target I'll, the Timon. Target the Timon. I will uh, fire on it from Point Blank Rage, which that fire disadvantage. Oh, that's so bad. Uh, Thirteen to hit. Nope. Ah, shit. I missed, and that's uh, that's all I got. Uh, it will try and bite your face off. Uh, eight plus five, 13. I'm guessing it misses. That misses. Uh, no, but you eight. do get muzzle to muzzle. Yeah. Ingve, do you want to ah, finish off the refugee? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, no. <laughs> Ingve is going to... Uh... This is the eyebrow guy, too. Yeah, really taking a beating. Oh, poor guy, poor guy. All right, and maybe maybe Rakir can walk on his back and fix it. Yeah, <laughs> like he did the last one. Uh, it's gonna have to do a Constitution save for fourteen. Uh, that's a five. Uh, so I don't think it makes it. <laughs> okay. Uh, you mean it's it not is, plus nine? Not uh, plus nine. Fifteen points of radiant damage. That's just. You know what? I'll give you a one in eight chance. If it's a one, it lands on Unibrow. It does not land on Unibrow as it dies. Uh, Azari, you got more meat. It smells like roast pig. Bacon. <laughs> as I pull ice shards out of my like, <laughs> chest. Ingve runs up and he's like, I'm so sorry. And he, Do you he... see that ancient wizard throw ice at you guys? Yeah, yeah exactly. Kicked his ass, man. Uh, so yeah, of course he heals them. So <laughs> an hour later, Dave and uh, Rakir the God show up. Uh, and hey, everybody, Rakir climbed a magic tree. Uh, yes, I sorry, did. sorry, 12 points. So if that's over, whatever you got, no, it. no, it's not. <laughs> okay. Well, you got 12, but thank right you. Now. Well, works. <laughs> Yeah, and so does Mr. Eyebrow. He gets 12 back. 
he only needed six back, but he appreciates the effort. Probably has a little bit of scarring. Um, it's like a jolt of coffee for him. Ooh, and there I was, face to face. Uh, day six is going to be clear. Day seven is going to be clear. On day six, you find the road slash path back to Ba. Day seven, you guys all arrive at Ba. Uh, it, but it looks a little different. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, there's some uh, makeshift walls uh, up around okay. the main entrance. Uh, it looks like the place is fortified. Uh, and there are gate guards. Uh, they recognize you four. Uh, they recognize some of the refugees, uh, but still, because one of them is stupid, you get the uh, halt. Who goes there? <laughs> are you <It's>... serious? <laughs> no, that's my sister. I I am John. <laughs> uh, I thought you were Shirley. Yeah, sure. <laughs> That's my mother. And I continue uh, walking through. So, well, uh, it's stockade fence. So, we're going to have to open it. Uh, and we will pick that up next time because uh, this is a good stopping point. Uh, congratulations. You guys have crossed the frontier. You fought the Jolt monsters. Uh, oh, and, yeah. What the hell were those, man? Dave uh, don't like lightning damage. Lesser lightning elementals. Wow. Okay. Uh, so, David, what'd you think? David thought it was great. Yeah, I liked it. It was awesome. Uh, sorry. Uh, Jesse, what'd you think? <laughs> it was good. I, I enjoyed that. Uh, it was kind of fun. Uh, interesting going across planes. I really, I really wanted to go and take the shorter route. Yeah. Just because <laughs> it felt more interesting. Let's go back that way. Yeah. <laughs> How's the high pot and what? Oh. I, it would have been much more interesting. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah I'm sure. What a... <laughs> uh, Your Holiness, what'd you think? <laughs> I thought it was wonderful. I I'd still, you know, am trying to find ways to understand exactly what is this whole death thing about. But I'm sure once I see um, Duff or Duff Doff. or whatever this Doff. is, Doff. I'm sure him and yes. I can have a chance to have a discussion about this. Uh, man, he I think, was standing I think you on. Might be surprised about that. <laughs> Rick here was standing on top of the world, looking down upon creation, and the only explanation he can find. <laughs> yeah, throw, yeah, throw Ingve into the lake uh, and call him <laughs> Karen. <laughs> exactly. Oh. Nice, Rob. What'd you think? It was fantastic. Yeah, I'm glad you guys are enjoying it. I think you're in for a wee bit of a surprise. Uh, Azari, your sister is still catatonic. Hooray! But she made so, it back. So she she made back, it back. Yeah, you guys are heroes uh, in the vampire world. Uh, so, uh, folks, this has been the Calamity Campaign. We hope you enjoyed it. Everybody's fine it. until sundown. That's right. <laughs> Then things get interesting. Remember, follow us on Twitch. Follow us on Twitter. Uh, take a look Don't at our let YouTube archives. Let them in. Use wooden stakes. Uh, if you uh, want to shoot the shit about D&D, &D, join our Discord. If you want to buy our crap, the link is down there. Uh, if you just want to listen to us and not see these money makers, uh, I think the link is also there. It's over on Podbean. Uh, thank you, Pirate Dog Dice, for... Uh, kind of having fun with these guys and uh adventure sense sorry uh it smelled like victory but you know uh there might be that smell out there or prairie grasses I, dave you got that or uh rob you got yep, yep. that one don't you yeah, mm, yeah uh, that. so check out prairie flower check out odd fish games uh for the adventure sense the shine system and how to rpg with your cats again if you have a few hours to spare at gen Con. oh whoops that was future tours <laughs> Yeah, that's that's the Kyle smell. Yeah, uh, that's the Kyle smell. Check them out. Uh, tomorrow we've got the Margu campaign. Those guys are in the canyons oh, of despair, looking for the dragon's horde. They are bound to have something go wrong. Uh, but if you want to join us next Saturday for a one shot, or you want to be able to talk show on Tuesday, M Hobo Inc. Twitter or Gmail. Look us up. We will hook you up. 
Folks, for all of us here at the Calamity Campaign, thanks for watching. Give them a big dating game kiss and wave. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody.